This is an introduction to their destruction. It really exists, brother. How can you prove to us that these were real people? Okay, that's an excellent question, Sonny. Let's start with Jesus, right? Now, we all know that the, the, the accounts of Tacitus, and we know the accounts of Josephus, and those are credible historians. But I'm going to throw another name in there. What about Celsus? How many brothers out there know about Celsus? C-E-L-S-U-S. That's another accredited historian. And there are many, many others that testify to the existence of Christ. And they were more approximate or more in proximity to the time when Christ existed. So they would know more then than we would know today. Let's look at Celsus again. So to their fantastic story, which they take from the Jews concerning the flood and the building of an enormous ark and the business about the message brought back to the saviour of the flood by a dove or was it an old crow? This is stupidity. That's why he said about an enormous ark and some dove or was it an old crow? What did he go on to say? He said, this is, this is nothing more than a debased and nonsensical version of the myth of the Kenya. Hebrew Israelites. And then they go, hmm? oh, look at her, she's wearing a top. Give me Corinthians 1 4. And God said, A woman was a, you're a whore. Give me scriptures. That's just fideism. Remember the word. It's verbalist fideism. Black women are scared to walk past them. How the hell are you going to even try to get someone to listen to what you're saying when you approach them like that? Don't just say, everybody had their myth story but what you should be asking is which one came first because I've read this story to you like before mm. correct the Cadian story and most of you I didn't even I just read it I didn't even tell you what it was about and most of you was like yeah that's the story of Noah and I'm like no that's the story of the Cadian the Cadian was before Noah that's actually in the Greeks fables so when they came up with these stories Celsus was just like, hold on a minute, I've heard this before. That's the story of the Kalian. It's child's play. Sitting here saying we can't debate our Hebrew, we don't debate them. It's child's play. No one lying. I've seen one Hebrew camp approach another and I thought they were going to fight. They were up in each other's face. Why? Because of the different interpretations of the scriptures. That's what the Bible does to you when you read it literally. The Christians think of Jesus as the very Logos of God and their worldview is very silly, a silly and fact as their records of how man came to be. They teach that man exists in a garden planted by God. This is what Origen was saying. And that after a time man was thrown out of this garden due to certain circumstances beyond his control and was made to live in a world that is most respect, in most respect was very opposite of the garden. Now all of this is very silly indeed. Moses can have only have written such things because he was stupid. And their ge general effects is that like the old comedies, where we hear of what? Proteus marrying Bellarphon. This is Greek um, mythology. Yeah? And Pegasus came from Achidia. In short, Moses and the prophets who put together this record had absolutely no inkling how the world came to be and their books are absolute garbage, Celsus. Let us imagine what a Jew, why did he say a Jew? Because a Jew is somebody who is learnt, let alone a philosopher who is of a higher order. That's what he meant. Not a tribe calling themselves Jews. That you fabricate the story of your birth from a virgin to quiet rumours about a true and unsavoury circumstances of your origin? Is it not the case that far from being born of a royal David city of Bethlehem, you were born in a poor country town and the woman who earned her living from spinning, I put prostitute, because that's what it meant. Mm -hmm. It is not the case that when her deceit was discovered, to wit, that she was pregnant by a Roman soldier named, what? Panthera. Now here is where it gets sticky. Who is, who is he talking about? Before, isn't Panthera the, um... That's right. Because when you look up Panthera or Pandera, you won't find much information about it. Do you understand what I'm saying? But he just told you here, in the first century, that's how the story was going. 
she got caught and got pregnant by a Roman soldier panthera. She was driven away by her husband, the carpenter, and convicted of adultery. Indeed, is it not so that in her disgrace, wandering far from home, she gave birth to a male child in silence and in humiliation? What more? Is it not so that you hired yourself out as a workman in Egypt, learnt magic, magic crafts, flaunted among your king's men? What absurdity! Clearly the Christians have used the myth of what? Danae and who? Agur and Antioch in fabricating the story of Jesus. So we're saying, we've read these stories in these myths. Is this the same Jesus in the Bible? What did he say here? He said he went into Egypt and learned magic. Do you know there's a Jesus in the Bible in the books of Acts that they call Bar Jesus? Mm. And people go, yeah, he was a magician. Is that who Celsus was talking about? Manifa, Egyptian priest referred to by Josephus, states Egypt was affected with disease owing to the foreigners. Among, okay, so he says, oh, and to the foreigners, among whom were those who were afterwards styled, what? The children of Israel. So he's saying they were styled like that afterwards. They were just making up shit. The Jews were around in the first century, anything that was hit, they were on it. What did he say? Also observe that what Exodus says of their Israelites, servitude under the king of what Heliopolis and of the oppression of their hosts the Egyptians is extremely probable it is here their history begins is nothing but mythology and cosmology what do you say it is here their history begin after that it's nothing but what mythology and cosmogony we're coming to Dr. Inan he says we seek in vain amongst the Egyptian hieroglyphics for scenes which recall such cruelty as those which we read in the Hebrew records. And in the writing which have been herito been translated, we find nothing resembling the wholesale destruction described and applauded by the Jewish historians as perpetrated by their own people. That Pharaoh should have diseased slaves whom he had driven out of his country because that's what happened. We didn't want, it's almost like they're saying, the funeral didn't want us to go. No, we were driving them the hell out. So it goes, we may conclude by saying that the story which has not been, which has not written until more than 500 years later after the Exodus itself can lay no claims to be considered historical. We can go further. We cannot be sure that Moses ever lived because there are no trace of his earthly existence outside of tradition. Egyptologist Dr. Young Asman. Thomas Inano, ancient faith and modern, what did he say? The story of the creation of the flood, of Abraham, of Jacob, of the descendants into the exodus from Egypt, of the career of Moses and the Jews in the desert. Soldiers. Soldiers. On the judge and their clients are all apocryphal, fabricated a later period of Jewish history. Say it with me fabricated at a later period of Jewish history. So when you see Moses, the magician, of course, with his wand, just like how you used to see pictures of Jesus, the Magos, with his wand, this is why I said in the books of Acts, when they said, Jesus, bar Jesus, who was a magician, was he the Magos? Was he the great sage, the magician? The Egyptians never used Hebrew slaves to build their temples. No one but Egyptians were permitted to work, in the, on, work the holy task, as any foreigner involvement would have defiled the temple. Contemporary Egyptologists can find campsites of ancient Bedouins, nomads. Some were only 20 or so camped for a couple of months. There is no evidence at all that anywhere from 300,000 to a half a million Hebrews set up camp Especially for 40 years, there is no record of a male prince named Moses in the royal family of Egypt. So the Hebrew Israelites, they would look on this and they were like, see, these are the Hebrews. I'm like, really? You're stooping that low? 
without one attestation to show for it? Mm. Then he goes on to say, there is a mention of Pharaoh with the word Moses attached to their name. Moses is not a Hebrew word, it's Egyptian. It is a part of a sentence name such as Thotmose, Atmos, or even Ramesses. It means son or is born of Thotmose, meaning, Thotmose meaning, Thoth is born or is born of Thoth. There is no record in any other kingdom that mention a half a million Hebrews walking by. We have no records of the Hebrew from Egyptian sources at all until two centuries later, about a thousand BCE, where they first appeared being mentioned in the past in the passing as a neighbor culture, a neighboring culture. Not a word about these escaped slaves over there in Palestine. The parting of the Red Sea is borrowed from Persian Sarastian legend. That's why I said to you, go and read it. Read Bacchus. Unless therefore a man by God great grace received the power to understand what has been said and done by the prophets, the appearance of being able to repeat the words or the deeds will not profit him, if he cannot explain the arguments of them. And will they not as surely appear contemptible to many, since they are related by those who understood them not? What was he talking about? The scriptures. Seltzer's categorically accused the Christians of changing their gospel story in many ways in order to better to answer the objection of their opponents. His accusation is that some of them, as it were, in a drunken state, produced self-induced visions, remodeled their gospel from its first written form and reform it so that they may be able to refute the objections brought against it. As to the scrubble of the Jews and the Christians, I can only say that these sects remind me of a cluster of bats or ants escaping from a nest, a bunch of frogs holding counsel in the swamp, or a clutch of worms assembling in the mock, all of them disagreeing over who is the worst sinner. Thus, do they say, God showed himself to us first, and he ignores the affairs of the world in order to give us his chosen, his full attention. They have never been of any significance or prominence, whatever for nothing of their history is to be found in the Greek history. What did he say? This is the Jews he's talking about. How can Celsus make such a claim when the Jews were in Egypt for 400 years? Why didn't he say that? He said they were runaway slaves from Egypt. Same question. Where is your history is to be found in the Greek history? Because none of the Greek philosophers that I've read have mentioned anything to do with Hebrew. Being cornered, of course, being cornered in the insignificant land of Palestine. We cannot expect the Jews to hear, to have heard of Hesed, an other inspired man. I've got the book of Hesed up there. And today, so they contrive for themselves a crude and fantastic story about a man being formed by God and breathed on by God, and that a woman was then formed out of a man's right side, and that God gave them commands, and that serpent came and proved himself superior to the wishes of God. This legend, they tell, the old woman as if to publicize the fact that their God is a weakling from the start indeed wholly unable to control even the first maid of his creation mm. the Jews and the Christians the more reasonable ones are ashamed of this nonsense and try their, ber their very their best to allegorize it mm. so we in Hebrew what do they call the Holy Spirit Rauk Hakadesh Rauk HaKodesh, Holy Spirit. What is the word Raok? It's feminine, the, the, the way they show you like, we've been slipped, and they've been beaten. Pull that rock. Listen, if I've got time to pull a rock like that and be speaking every day, when I come home, the last thing I want is pussy. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> Do you understand? Yeah. The last thing I want is to jump on my girl and say, yeah, open your legs. But all of a sudden, the Israelites outstripped the Egyptians. They multiplied more than them. That the Pharaoh got worried and go, look, oh shit, they multiplied. You can't have been working them hard because they had time to fuck. And produce kids.